All right, welcome to the Rank and Painting tutorial. The first thing you're going to want to do is install the app. So you go to the Play Store, press the Install button, downloads it, installs it, and you're ready to go. So let's open it. So you open the app. First thing you have to do is you have to give the app some permissions to do the things it needs to do. So it's going to ask you to give you an accessibility permission. This enables a uh, Ryan Companion to see what's happening in the Uber and Lyft app. So it's able to see the text that's on the screen and push the buttons within those apps. So you want to enable that. Um, this brings up the accessibility uh, screen or settings on your phone. You click on Ryan Companion Automation Service. And you switch that from off to on. And then it gives you a general explanation of what the app is going to be allowed to do. So you press OK. It brings you back to the app and then it says allow access to your de device's location, so GPS. So the app uses the GPS information to track your uh, driving activity while on a trip or while uh, the app is active. So it's able to log your trips and you want to allow that and you want to be able to save that information somewhere and you want to save it to your device and that's what this permission is asking for to uh, access the uh, files on your device so you want to allow that and now it's ready to go okay so let's go and through and explain how this app works okay so the first thing you're going to do is in this top white bar up here it uh, to the left, it shows you a Uber a Lyft icon, Uber and Lyft icon. So, a green box around that icon means it's active. A blue box and a green box means it's set it set as your primary app. So that's the app that's going to keep in the foreground while you're waiting for trips. If I click on it again, it's going to deactivate that app, and then it'll only use uh, it won't use uber or it won't track anything or log anything or automate uber at all but it will uh keep lyft in the foreground and it will automate everything for lyft now if you can do the same for lyft you can use just uber or just lyft or set lyft as your primary app or uber as your primary app next to those you see a red box around uh where it says 20 trip accepts remaining. That's how many uh, trip accepts you have left remaining. So um, that's how many trips it's gonna automatically accept. If you want more, you have to watch a commercial or an ad. Um, they're usually like 20 seconds long or something like that. But uh, you click on that, it, it brings up a quick commercial. You watch the commercial. Once it's over, you're awarded some trip accepts and you'll be good for pretty much a whole day. You can see this commercial was a little longer. It's like 30 seconds. So uh, we'll let this play through you can, so you can see how this works. And uh, you have five, four, three, two, one. Video is over. You've earned your trip requests or trip accepts. Now you can just back on this where you can click on it if you'd like. And uh, you can install Final Fantasy or whatever is on there. But uh, we're going to back out of there. And now you can see you have 45 trip accepts remaining. Which should give you enough trip accepts for an entire day or more. Um, most drivers aren't driving more than 25 trips per day. So I figure that's pretty fair if you only have to watch one commercial per day. Um, if you want to watch another one, just click on that button again. And you can log up your trip accepts so you don't... You know, if you feel like watching a bunch of commercials one day, just watch a whole bunch of them, and then it'll rack them up, and you don't have to uh, watch any more for another year or so, however many trip, trips you take. But, uh, all right. So now, let's go through the settings menu. Okay. You can see the green boxes around some options. That means they're selected. Starting at the top, it says Auto Queue Trips. So that means if a trip request comes in while you're on another trip, for instance in Uber, you're able to uh, have trip requests come in as you're approaching your drop off for your current trip. So if you want to automatically accept those, make sure that green box is checked. If you don't want to automatically accept them, 
you uncheck it. You still be able to manually accept them and Ride Companion will still log those trips if you want it to, but uh, it won't uh, automatically accept the trips. Sometimes you don't want to automatically accept a trip. But uh, so yeah, that's how, that's what that one is. Uber Pool. If you're an Uber Pool driver, same thing. If you don't want to automatically automatically accept Uber Pools, just uncheck it. Or you don't want to automatically accept an Uber Eats, uncheck it. Or same with Lyft Line, uncheck it or check it. And you'll still have the option to uh, manually accept those types of trips when they come in. It doesn't automatically deny them or anything. It just doesn't automatically accept them. Now, if you want to log your trip routes and your trip information, you click on that, and it'll automatically log your trip routes. The, the route you drove from the time you accepted the trip until the time you drop off the passenger, plus all the times in between, including uh, the time you accepted, the time um, you picked up the passenger, and the time you dropped them off. All right, and then you can see the slider down here where it says max time. So that's the maximum amount of time um, you want to drive to pick up a passenger. So if a trip request comes up for say like 20 minutes and you set this for 15 minutes, um, it won't automatically accept that trip. You can still manually accept it, it just won't automatically accept it. And this is for a passenger rating setting. If you want to not accept trips unless the passenger is a 5 star passenger, then I set it to 5 stars or 5.0 and it won't automatically accept those trips. Most passengers are between 4 and 5. Um, I figure if they're under 3 they're probably not worth picking up or they've caused a lot of trouble for other people. So I set mine to 3 and then uh, I won't accept those trips automatically. I can still do it manually if you know I feel like it but uh, it's not gonna, the ride companion won't accept those trips for me. So I click that settings button in the lower right corner, and then I'll toggle that menu. In the center is my trip history button. It looks like a location icon. If I click on that, I'm able to pull up my trip history. So if I want to pull up my Uber history, or my Lyft history, or all of my history, I can do that. And I can filter it by today, yesterday, this month, this year, or all trips. If I want to view all of my trips, just click on all trips. It pulls them up, puts, it, puts a bunch of icons on the map, and those are my drop-off locations for each trip. You can see I have an Uber Eats trip, I have an Uber trip, a bunch of Lyft trips. If I click on this Uber icon here, it tells me how many miles I drove. Um, the, it tells me it was an Uber trip, it was an Uber X trip. It tells me the passenger name, the passenger's rating, the surge value of the trip was all. It was a one multiple, so there was no surge. And where I picked them up, oops, I'll click on that again. Where I picked them up, or where I accepted the trip, I mean, where I picked them up, and then where I dropped them off. And then the times, of course, of when I did that. So I click on that box to make it disappear, and you can see the, the trip route we drove. And if I click on that trip route, it'll tell me how many miles I drove. And you see how that works. Now for the upper right corner here, um, you can go to the backup menu, which is a little drive white icon in the upper right corner. If I press on that, i got to select the Google Drive account. So that's mine right there. It says I'm ready to back up. If I want to back something up, I will click on the plus button in the lower right corner. If I want to pull up old trips, I swipe down. It'll show me the trips I already backed up. Or I can hit this refresh button in the upper right corner. It'll do the same thing. Now if I want to uh, select that trip, I just press on it. And then I get a save button or a delete <coughs> button. The green save button will uh, restore all those files and the delete button will delete those files from my Google Drive. So 
So if I want to restore it, I press restore, it restored it. If I want to delete it, I delete it, and it's gone for good, it's never coming back. Now if I want to back my trips up, this menu is very, very familiar. It's used a lot in the app to filter out your trips. But I can back up just my Uber trips, just my Lyft trips, or all my trips. And then whatever trips I want to back up, you know, the time range, today, yesterday, this month, this year, for all of my trips. So I want to back all of them up. You see a little icon pops up in the lower left. It says send 18 files to drive. So if I press on that, it puts them in a zip file, sends them to my Google Drive, and you press save, and boom. It's on Google Drive. I swipe down to refresh, and you can see that it's there. It just updated that file. Now if I want to save it again, I do the same thing. Say I want to save one, just my Uber trips for this month. There's eight Uber, or eight files related to my Uber trips. I press on that button again. You can see it's going to change the file name a little bit. I press save. It has backed up successfully. I swipe down. And there it is. There's my Uber trip right here. There are my Uber trips files. So we're done in the backup menu. Back up out of there. And now we can go to the reports and we can see all our driving activity while using Ride Companion. So I go to reports and again you can filter this out the same way according to your, your choices. We're going to select all of our trips and you can see these are all the trips I've given while using Ride Companion. It tells me how many trips I've taken, how many miles I've driven, time on my trips and then time to pick up. So the time I spent from the time I accepted a trip till I picked up a passenger, it says 58 minutes. That's a total for all trips. Total time on trips is an hour and 46 minutes. And you can see it breaks it down by trip right here. Pretty much giving you all that information for everything. And it gives you Uber. There's an UberX trip. Surge value is one, so really no surge. Trip distance. Uh, time to pick up 24 minutes and then time to drop off says 34 minutes and the date that trip was accepted. Now if you want to print this out, say for like tax reasons or whatever, uh, for your own filing purposes, you just hit this print icon in the top. Um, you select your printer, my printer's offline. So I'll save it as a PDF and then you can use it whenever you want, wherever you want saves it as a PDF file. You can see that's exactly how it's going to print off your printer. Or be able to be viewed in a PDF file. You would save it and it'll save it as a PDF. Now we can back out of there and back out of here. And now let's make the magic happen. So in the lower left corner you see this power button. You're going to press on that when you want Ride Companion to be active. So I'll press on that. Ride Companion is activated. It's turning on Uber. It's turning on Lyft. We're in drive mode. It's switched back to Uber because that's my primary app. Now when I'm done driving, all I do is I go to Ride Companion. I press the power button and it switches them all off. Just like that. It's all magic. So when a trip comes in, What's going to happen is Ride Companion is going to see it in either the Uber driver app or the Lyft driver app. And it'll press the appropriate button for you um, automatically according to the settings you chose. Now, it might not always work if Uber has recently uh, updated their app or if Lyft has updated their app since Ride Companion has been updated. So, just be aware that it doesn't always automatically accept the trips, but it will always automatically uh, detect your driving activity for like uh, logging your trip routes and times. It should be able to do that automatically because <coughs> um, that stuff doesn't change very much in the Uber or Lyft apps. It's just the buttons change a lot, so it's hard to uh, determine which one to press to accept the trip. 
But anyway, that's how that works. If you like it, please rate it well on the on the Play Store and uh, keep using it. Enjoy. Thanks.